hello students today we are going to discuss extensions of mendelian genetics and the topic which we are discussing is epistasis what is epistasis epistasis are all non allelic interactions where one gene influences a non allelic gene resulting in modifications of mendelian 9s to 3s to 3s to 1 dihybrid ratio what does that mean it means that all modified dihybrid ratios will come under epistasis so what are these uh, dihybrid modified ratios these are 9s to 7 because 9 is to 7 is nothing but 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. 7 includes 3 is to 3 is to 1. So these ratios are 9 is to 7, 9 is to 6 is to 1, 9 is to 3 is to 4, 12 is to 3 is to 1, 13 is to 3, 15 is to 1, and 1 is to 4 is to 6 is to 4 is to 1. All are examples of modified dihybrid ratio and if you add these all will be equal to 16 for example 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 is 16 total is 16 similarly 9 is to 7 total is 16 9 is to 6 is to 1 is 16 n is to 3 is to 4 is 16 12 is to 3 is to 1 is 16 13 is to 3 is 16 15 is to 1 is 16 and 1 is to 6 is to 4 is to 1 it will be 16 epistasis differs from dominance because it involves non allelic interaction while dominance involves intra allelic masking or effect in f1 so you will learn that all the epistatic ratios are involving non allelic interactions so the first example which we are going to learn today is complementary genes which was discovered by Bateson and Punnett in Lathyrus odoratus. So this is a picture of the plant Lathyrata, Lathyrus odoratus. Now what is complementary ratio? First of all, you have to remember that complementary ratio, there are two ratios 9 is to 7 and 9 is to 6 is to 1. And these are also called complementary genes. Also they are called duplicate recessive epistasis. Now, how this was discovered? For this was discovered by Bateson and Punnett when they were crossing a white flowered plant with a purple and they got a pur purple flowered plant in F1. When they uh, self these F1 plants, they got purple is to white in the ratio of 3 is to 1. So, this they expected this and, and they got this. Similarly, in cross 2, when they crossed a white flowered plant, which was quite different from white 1 with a purple flowered plant, they got purple and they got in F2, 3 is to 1 ratio of purple is to white. Now, they wanted to check whether white 1 is and white 2 are because of the same gene or different gene. So, they crossed in cross 3. They crossed a white 1 with white 2 and to their surprise the F1 was neither white 1 nor white 2 but it was a purple flat plant and when these plants were selfed they got 9 is to 7 ratio of 9 purple is to 7 white flat plants. So from this cross they concluded that because the F2 ratio is 9 is to 7 so F2 is a modified dihybrid ratio at in and it involves two pair of genes so white one and white two are not because of one pair of genes but it is because of two pair of genes how to uh, explain this so in the third cross when the white one was crossed to white two and they got f1 in purple and 9 is to 7 in f2 generation so if we take these genotypes of the parents capital W capital W small p small p and then in white 2 if we take this is also homozygous 
small w small w capital p capital p then we get in purple purple will be a dihybrid it will be dihybrid or heterozygous uh, progeny consisting of capital w small w capital p small p and when this this was selfed so you can see that all the genotypes which are in the triangle of red uh, these nine genotypes all those genotypes which have at least one capital w and one capital p they will be all purple because the cap the two dominant non alleles are complementing each other to produce a new phenotype and all those genotypes which have just one dominant allele they will be all white in color so you can see that all the genotypes which are circled with green color they have only one dominant allele either w or uh, either capital w or or capital p so this this is how we can give explanation of 9 purple is to 7 white so this is the phenotypic now how to define complementary genes uh, based on this punnett square uh, so this complementary genes are those genes which give the same phenotypic effect when they are present separately but they complement each other when together and give an altogether new effect for why this happens because the two genes which give the same effect when they are present separately uh, they they are actually uh, uh, making something for example say gene was gene 1 was making an enzyme which was converting the precursor into colorless product and the gene 2 was making this colorless intermediate into purple color so this is how we explain complementary genes 9 is to the other example of complementary gene is 9 is to 6 is to 1 this is also called complementary genes and this was discovered in crude shape in cucurbits when a spherical uh, shape cucurbit was crossed to spherical shape cucurbit all were disc shaped so in this is a similar example where we can see that parents they are of um, they are giving the same they are of same morphology f1 was different from both the parents and in f2 Oh, when the selfing was done of F1 in F2, 9 is to 9 disc is to 6 spherical is to 1 cylindrical or long fruit shape plants were obtained. Now you can see that 9 uh, plus 6 plus 1 is 16. So this is also a modified dihybrid ratio. And this is an example of complementary genes because if you split 9 is to 7 into 9 is to 6 is to 1, the, the, the 1 is homozygous recessive genotype. So complementation, the, these six uh, spherical phenotypes are because of the complementation, non-alleles and six genotypes are because of separate non-alleles, separate dominant non-alleles and the one, 9 is to 6 is to 1, the one last one is because of the complementation of recessive non-alleles. So here you can see that uh, the all the genotypes which are which are in uh, yellow triangle they are all nine with uh, a different phenotype the circled ones with green circled ones are all those genotypes which have just one dominant allele and the last one is homozygous recessive it has a um, different uh, morphology which is other than nine is to nine and now the second example which we are going to discuss today is of epistasis is dominant epistasis. Now dominant epistasis has two examples 12 is to 3 is to 1 and 13 is to 3. In this we will learn two more terms which are hypostatic and epistatic. In the earlier complementary genes we, 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 we were not using these terms but in this we are using two more terms hypostatic and epistatic. This is also these are all both of them are also examples of uh, complementary gene uh, both of them are examples of dominant epistasis and what is a dominant epistasis? 
a dominant in dominant epistasis a dominant allele masks the expression of another dominant non allele so the allele which masks the expression is called epistatic and the allele which is masked is called hypostatic bateson you introduced the term epistasis which means standing on and epistasis is nothing but it is an example of inter allelic inhibition or inter allelic masking so first let us discuss the ratio 12 is to 3 is to 1 which is an example of dominant epistasis and this was discovered by bateson and punnett in fruit color of cucurbits so when they were crossing a white fruit bearing plant with a yellow fruit bearing plant they got f1 in f1 they got all white fruit bearing plant and so they conclude that probably white is dominant over yellow but in f2 instead of 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 ratio they got 12 white is to 3 yellow is to 1 green so how to explain this this was parent like this say the genotype of both the parents are like this both are homozygous the first white fruit bearing plant is say capital w capital w small y small y and the yellow one is small w small w capital y capital y so in f1 they got white plant and this was dihybrid heterozygous plant having um, capital w small w capital y small y in f2 how to explain 12 white is to 3 yellow is to 1 so we can explain like this when f1 was selfed so all these genotypes which have uh, capital w and capital y as well as only capital w they will be white in color so all those genotypes where both capital w and capital y are there the capital w is suppressing the action of capital y so this becomes dominant capital w is dominant over capital y so this is an example of dominant epistasis so you can see here that all those genotypes which have both capital w and capital y as well as only capital w they will be white in color yellow will be only ones which are Uh, which are uh, when they are alone without capital w so you can see them all those genotypes are uh, circled with yellow color and the green will be homozygous uh, recessive so this is how we explain uh, 12 is to 3 is to 1 now this is called dominant epistasis because one of the dominant alleles is one of the dominant alleles is uh, suppressing the action of another dominant now uh, this is the genotypic ratio and uh, the genotypic and phenotypic ratio you can see that phenotypic ratio is 12 is to 3 is to 1 and the genotypic ratio is 1 is to 2 is to 4 is to 1 is to 2 is to 1 is to 2 is to 1 and w in this punnett square we will uh, we will say that capital w is epistatic and capital y is hypostatic gene so i hope you have uh, you have understood the concept of dominant epistasis and complementary genes and let us discuss more in other lectures thank you